Hi tutors. Tutoring kids is a really rewarding experience. But at the same time, it can be quite tough, especially we are a new tutor starting out. So in this video, I'll be giving you four tips on how you can start teaching children. So let's begin. First tip is resource material. It is good to use resource material or books that has lots of beautiful pictures because kids really like that. Besides that, we can employ using flashcards and also with uh, games or word games, especially if you are teaching them English, we can use English word games and that can really spice up the lesson. And when determining what book to buy for the children, it is good to make sure that we use uh, books that is slightly higher than the student's level of understanding. So that way they'll not feel that uh, what they are learning is too difficult or hard. We can determine what is the student's level by doing an assessment prior to purchasing the materials or the books. So that way we will know what is the student's level and what books to purchase. It is good to purchase at least two, three or more books so that the children have a variety to choose from because uh, small children tend to get bored quite easily at times so if we have a variety of materials for them to choose uh, that way you'll keep the lesson interactive and they will feel uh, that uh, they will never get bored and uh, it is important for us as tutors to prepare well for the lessons when we prepare well for the lessons we will be very confident when we are teaching the child and that will really make the lesson interesting and another tip on what children really like is to act out characters or to role play because uh, that can really make the lesson much more interesting so tip number two is to do with teaching. When we are teaching a kid, we want to talk slowly and aloud, especially when we are teaching them languages. Because if we, are to, if we talk too fast, then it will be uh, much more difficult for them to register what we are trying to say. So if we talk slowly and loudly, then it will be easier for them to understand what we are trying to teach them. Besides that, when we explain terms, especially with complicated terms, we can try to explain it in a simple way, in a clear way, and uh, sometimes it is good to repeat what we teach. Repetition is very effective to help the student to retain what uh, he or she is learning. So talking about explaining uh, complicated terms, uh, for example, if you're talking about the water cycle, uh, explaining how it works, so instead of using uh, terms like evaporation, we might say something simple such as that the water is, uh, water is uh, uh, in the ocean, and then as the ocean gets really, really hot, and then the water will turn into gas and then it will fly up in the air. So that can be an easier way to explain the term evaporation. And another tip when we are teaching is that it is good for us to smile uh, constantly as much as we can. Uh, that will uh, basically make a shy child become more comfortable with us and uh, Obviously, it will make the lesson much more uh, interesting. And another thing is that when we are teaching, it is, good, it is good for us to comment and to reward them uh, for good behavior. For example, we can say to them something like, if you complete this homework soon, then we can play the English crossword puzzle that you really enjoy. So that is what we can do and also in order to 
help them to understand what they are learning. Uh, for example, to do with storytelling, I like to quote uh, this quotation from the readingrockers.org. He has a very interesting thing to say here. He said that after reading the story, we can do three things. The first thing is to ask questions to help the child to recall what happened in the story, relate the story to personal experiences. Example, did you ever put themselves in the story? Example, what would you have done? Express ideas, opinions and creativity. The second suggestion is that to do a book-related activity so the child can act out the story with or without props, make up a sequel to the story which you write on a large piece of paper, draw pictures that show the events in the story, then use them to retell the story. So, and the third point that is suggested here is to encourage the child to look at the book at home or in the classroom. Read the book again and again if the child is interested. So again, when we use repetition, it will really help them to retain what they learn. A nice article. And the third point here for us to be more effective in encouraging a child is to check with the parents. So when we check the parents, we'll be able to know about their background, personality and ability. We can find out about their strengths and weaknesses and what is needed in order to encourage, to help them more effectively. Maybe a parent may offer some suggestions on how we can uh, better help their child to improve on whatever subject that we are teaching them. Point number four is our inner qualities. It is good for us to be patient as well as positive at all times, especially when we are encouraging young children. This can be tough, especially uh, when they don't listen well or they try to rebel. And uh, it is uh, good to note that we don't want to lose our temper on them or to scold them because when we do that, we are setting a bad example for the children. The children might think, wow, look at my teacher. Uh, he just have to lose his temper and then he can get things his own way. So for me as a child, maybe it's good for me to also lose my temper so that I can get whatever things my way or whatever things I want. So it is good to have a mild temperament at all times. Of course, we may need to discipline them from time to time, but instead of uh, losing our temper, uh, it will be more encouraging for us to talk to them firmly in a gentle manner and at the same time, we are teaching them uh, to be patient and positive at all times. Yes, we need to talk to them firmly but in control. And emotionally, we are stable so we can talk to them firmly and uh, get them to avoid uh, showing a bad behavior. So we have to achieve some sort of a balance them when disciplining or instructing children. I actually have a video on how to handle challenging students. I'll make sure that I'll provide the link in the description box below. Sometimes we need to be really patient and positive, especially the student is a slow learner. So we may need to be really patient in instructing and guiding them. And in the long run, it will really pay out. The child will really appreciate this quality that we are showing and they will make good progress. And uh, in order to be patient and positive all the time, as tutors, it is vital that we maintain a balanced schedule. That means that from time to time, to avoid overworking 
or to get stressed up, it is good for us to go for holiday or take a break from time to time. So that way, we will be, we'll always have a mild temperament and uh, we can always be positive and ready to help all our students if they are all children. So hopefully you have uh, gained some uh, benefit from this video. Please subscribe and share this with your friends and I'll see you again in the next video.